Hello everyone, this is engineer Mustafa Taha and today I'm going to be explaining about induction motors. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. There's two types of motors, either DC or AC motors. And induction motors is of AC type. Why? Because you're going to apply AC voltage, for example, three phase voltage, okay? Moreover, whenever you go to a factory, 80% of the time, it's an induction motor. Why? We're going to answer this question in this presentation. So, first of all, let's talk about the constitution of this induction motor, the physical constitution. It consists of two parts. First of all, the stator and the rotor. Now, the stator, from its name, stator, static, which means fixed. So, the stator is of the fixed part, and the rotor is the moving part, okay? Now, the mechanism of each part alone. Let's start with the stator. Now here's where induction motor is different than a DC motor, for example. You see, for an induction motor, we wrap up the armature coil in the stator, you know. In a DC motor, you go for the rotor. But for the induction motor, you can wrap the armature coil here, okay? <coughs> so basically, when you wrap up the armature coil in the stator, you see, it's a three-phase voltage. You're going to supply it with an AC voltage. So, voltage, it's going to induce what? It's going to induce current. Current passing through the coil will introduce a magnetic field. That's Ampere's law. But the thing is, because we are dealing with AC, it's not going to be a magnetic field. It's going to be a circular magnetic field, if you know what I mean. Okay? And this is of the stator part, from the stator point of view. Now, if we went to, to the rotor point of view, you see, there's a rotating magnetic field. There will be an interaction between the rotor and the circulating magnetic field. Let's suppose that the conductor at the rotor is of short circuited. For example, it's all on one, so it has only one resistance. Okay? If that's the case, and the circulating magnetic field is going to interact with the rotor, and due to Faraday's induction law, it's going to generate current, and current passing through the coil of this rotor is going to create what? A magnetic field. Thus, it's going to make the rotor move. Okay? So that's of the physical part, okay? And the mechanism of, the, of this physical part. Now, if you want to take the equivalent circuit, or before that, actually, that's why it's called an induction motor. If we looked at it here, current in the rotor is induced from the circulating magnetic field that came from the stator. You know, it's applied to the magnetic field. Now, let's take this physical part and try to apply it on a circuit. Okay? Fun part, fun fact. This is so similar to a transformer and it's actually true if you looked at it. See, there's a coil here and a coil here. Coil is supplying voltage to the other coil. Now, how's that? Basically, to the magnetic field, which reminds us of what? A transformer, only with one difference. So let's first of all take the circuit of this uh, induction motor. First of all, it starts off just like a transformer, of course, in one phase. There is a resistance, okay, of the stator. Then the reactance. Then there's two parallel uh, elements. First one represents the core losses. Okay, RC. Second one represents the magnetization. Now, this is the V phase. Then we have the coil. This is what? This is the stator part. Now it moves to the rotor part, which also has a resistance and a reactance. Okay, but here's where induction motors is different than a transformer. You see here, it's closed, okay? And this is important because, as we said, suppose that the rotor is closed, you know? It's short-circuited. So here is where's the difference, the main difference between an induction motor and a different transformer. But anything else, like, for example, here we can move these circuit elements to this. But this is the secondary side, the rotor. This is the primary side. We can move this, multiply it by the terms ratio, and move it to this part of the circuit, if you know what I mean. Now, 
Suppose that we inputted a power from the stator, so we started off by inputting a power, okay? So inputting a power, we go with the P input, P in. Some part of the power is going to be lost due to, of course, uh, coil losses and resistance losses. So, for example, or copper losses. So this is Is squared R. Then another is going to go from the core losses, the iron, for example, iron losses. Ic squared R. Now, we are done with the second from the stator part. Now, we move to the rotor part. It's going to cross the gap, right? When it crosses the gap, it's going to be PG, P gap. Then it's going to go arrive to the secondary part of the circuit. When it arrives to the secondary part of the circuit, it is what? It's going to lose, again, resistance losses, right? There's another losses, IR squared, okay? This is what? This is the resistance losses of the rotor. Then another losses is going to be affected or it's going to be due to what? Mechanical losses because rotor is moving. Rotor is moving means there is friction. More than friction, there is, for example, winding losses. All of this is also P mechanical. So at the end, after all of these losses, we are going to end up with P out finally. So it's going to MP inputted. When it's inputted, it, a lot of it's going to be lost. When it's lost, at the end, with all the losses, we're going to have the real power that we are going to use. Here are we going to introduce, here we're going to introduce efficiency. See, efficiency is what? Efficiency is the power output over power input times 100. What does that mean? It means how efficient this motor is. You know, if it lost too much power during the input, Okay, it lost too much power, it's not efficient enough. But if it didn't lose power, which means power output is equal to power input, what's going to happen? The efficiency is going to be good. It's going to be, uh, like for example, 0 0.9. This is a good motor, okay? <clears throat> then, what are we going to talk about after the efficiency? Uh, let's talk about... Hmm. What else? During power. Yes, let's talk about power factor. You see, power factor is what? Is, <clears throat> for example, we have the power is equal to V I cosine this. The cosine, the angle is a power factor. What does it mean to, be, have, to have a power factor? Power factor means how much it consumes electrical power. So it's literally the ratio of the real power over the apparent power. A good power factor means it's better because basically it's consuming all the electric power. Less power factor needs to be corrected. We can correct it by many ways. For example, adding uh, correction capacitors, if you know what I mean. Okay? And it's also affected by many things. For example, the power factor varies. If we supply too much voltage, uh, if we supply too much load, everything changes due to the, the conditions of our design, of our induction motor, okay? But now, enough talking about power. Let's introduce something else. You see, another name of an induction motor would be an asynchronous motor. Why? What's the meaning of an asynchronous? Asynchronous, from the name, asynchronous. They are not together. Everybody is different. What does it mean, different? It means that oh, magnetic field, okay, circulating magnetic field, is different than, with speed, is different than the rotating rotor. You know what I mean? And this is called slip. So slip is, for example, NS minus NR over NS times 100. Slip is basically the difference between the circular magnetic field and the rotating or movement of the rotor, or basically how much this rotor is lagging the circulating magnetic field. You see, this slip is important. Why? Because it induces torque. And torque, what is torque? We're going to introduce that later. But the thing is, slip, as slip increase, torque increase. And they are proportional to each other. It's the most important in an induction motor. It depends on it, because it's going to make the rotor move. 
Now, what's torque? Torque is basically the interaction between the magnetic field coming from this side, which is the stator side, and the current of the rotor. Because, as we said, this interaction makes the rotor move, which is basically what we want, because the rotor is going to move and it's going to do the work, right? In any case, this torque is affected by many factors. For example, the strength of the magnetic field coming from the stator, uh, the amount of voltage applied, the slip, okay? So this is all about the torque. Question, can we control this speed, okay? Or before controlling the speed, is this induction motor self-starting? Well, the answer is yes. Because you see, once this induction motor is energized, you know, you give it the power, or you give it the input power, you give it the voltage, okay? Immediately, it's gonna provide it with the, with the rotor and it's gonna move, the rotor is gonna move. It depends on an electromechanical induction, you know, electromagnetic induction, okay? No external mechanism is needed or need to be applied, no need for, uh, to be connected with an external generator, no need to connect it with a starting uh, motor, you know what I mean? So that's with the self-starting, yes, it is self-starting. So. Can we control the speed? Yes, we can. You see, by many ways. For example, we can provide it with a voltage controller, which is the main supply of the voltage. You know, we connect it to a voltage supplier. We can change the voltage applied. When we change the voltage applied, it's gonna change the speed, right? Or for example, we can change the frequency, because as we know, frequency and speed are proportional to each other, you know? Or, for example, change the flux, magnetic field intensity, or, for example, convert the frequency, okay, uh, from a fixed power frequency to a variable power frequency. Okay, and this control, the voltage, like controlling the speed, is one of the advantages of an induction motor. Now, can we reverse, like, for example, it's going clockwise, can it go anti-clockwise? Also, yes by a simple mechanism, which is just inverting any of the two uh, suppliers of the voltage of the motor, because as we know, it's an AC three phase, interconnection, changing the interconnection of any of the connections to the uh, motor is gonna just make it reverse, you know? Uh, suppose it's a delta connection or it's a Y connection, just change any of the two. Let's say delta is here, uh, just change this and this or this and this, and it's gonna go for the different direction, okay? But of course, be careful because once you change the direction, efficiency might be low, there might be overcooling. Us as engineers, we must be careful for that. We must be cautious. So, after all of this, okay, after seeing that we can control the speed, we can reverse the direction, uh, all of that, the characteristics of an induction motor, this answers the question of why Induction motors are used on 80% or 90% of the industrial factories. You see, no permanent magnet needed, no brushes needed, okay? It's a self-starting. All of these advantages provide for the advantage of using an induction motor over a DC motor, for example, or using induction motor for any type of a motor, okay? In this case, thank you everyone for watching. Hopefully, after this lecture, you have an overview of how this this mechanism of the working principle of the induction motor and the advantages of an induction motor next time you go to a factory you're sure that this motor working is an induction motor after watching this lecture of course because you know you know more about induction motor this was mustafa have a nice day